Hey, Moses. Moses. Buddy, you behaving yourself? All right, you guys behave. You be nice to Hazel. Well, good morning, guys. King Jesus bless you. Just wanted to give you a little tour of some of the grounds here where we're staying near grandbabies, near our family. This cool A-frame structure that's been pretty awesome. And coming from Florida, every time we see this little stream leading into the lake, we're looking for alligators. You kind of get used to that in Florida whenever there's water. But uh, anyways, this is so beautiful. We would love to, uh, to live here a portion of the year. Anyways. <clears throat> Hope you guys can see me good I'm looking at the back of my camera which I don't always do all right so I wanted to talk today guys about again um, just the notion uh, the concept of the pre-tribulation rapture I see it here again in, from the Old Testament Jeremiah 37 Jeremiah 30 at the beginning here talks about a time like none other um, <clears throat> a time of Jacob's sorrow alas for that day is great so that none is like it it is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. When I hear this scripture, it makes me think how just the Jew hatred that is in the world, uh, so much of it, all of it, is so that Bible prophecy can't be fulfilled. So that these demons would try to make the Lord God a liar by him saying, prophesying the truth in his word. They're going to try to counter that so that it doesn't come to be. So if all Israel were to be destroyed, then this would not come true, where it says, alas, but a third of Israel, of Jews, will come through it. So what do we see? We, we see things like the Holocaust. We see things like uh, the terrorists in the Middle East trying to just destroy Israel from the river to the sea. There's no two-state option. There's no peace. They're going to be, not even peaceful, but they're going to be happy if all Jews are destroyed everywhere. <clears throat> so... We see it right here. We know that the church does not replace Israel. Israel has its promises all throughout Scripture. The church has its promises as well. Wanted to point that out. And there are so many uh, pre-tribulation rapture uh, scriptures. I read more in Revelation today talking about uh, the 24 elders. Um, I believe totally symbolic of the church. They're getting the, they have the white raiment, crowns. There's language, you shall rule and reign with Christ on his throne. That's not talking to anybody but the church. It's not talking to Israel. Uh, there's never promises to Israel that you're going to be ruling and reigning. They're God's people, but they still need to come through Christ Jesus uh, to enter into that uh, presence of the Lord. You know, also from End Time Headlines today, I saw a headline talking about 11 NFL teams are not going to be participating in what this month of June is all about. Uh, you guys know what I mean. The uh, LG, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, alphabet situation. Um, and I see that, and I, and I think when, a few years ago, when a lot of NFL players were taking a knee during the anthem, um, all, these, all these foolish causes, uh, it's great that these 11 teams aren't participating, but it also seems like a sign of the times in terms of that's like a third of the NFL teams. I think there's like 32. And uh, man, you know, it, it should be flip flopped. It should be most. It should be all teams saying we're not, we're not bowing our knee to this, to this agenda, to this socialist agenda, to this sexual perversion agenda. God bless America, man. God help America uh, with such sin. <clears throat> yeah, you know, America needs to repent. So, uh, just wanted to point that out from what I noticed. Guys, what I want to close with and touch on is um, a very excellent message from the book of Matthew. 15, was it? 15 or 14? 15. And this is talking about how we can learn messages, um, or lessons rather, from this chapter on how to be more bold 
in these last days, even in the face of things that seem righteous and holy and religious and good, seemingly, uh, we need discernment. The Word of God is, is like a scalpel. It's so precise. And we need that so we don't succumb to uh, things that have an appearance of godliness but lack the power therein. And sorry, guys, I'm looking around just keeping an eye on, on these guys, especially with the baby Moses. You never know what they're going to get into. Okay. <clears throat> So Matthew 15, talking a lot about defilement comes from within. So it's not about these traditions where uh, the scribes and Pharisees of Jesus' time um, were talking about such things as, hey, why don't your disciples wash their hands before they eat? And Jesus said, hey, why do ye also transgress the commandments of God by your tradition? So a lot of times tradition, man can create tradition, little habits, things, hey, my family's been doing for years and their family. And that stuff can end up trumping or, or disrespecting God's God's word, His law. <clears throat> Jesus speaking, for God commanded, saying, "Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death." But <coughs> excuse me, but ye say, "Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou might be profited by me, and honor not thy father or his mother, he shall be free." Thus have you made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. I think of uh, a former denomination system I came out of before I got saved, where there was so much tra tradition. Um, the book of John talks about call no man uh, father, and the title of holy father is for God alone. Yet this denomination will call its leader holy father. <clears throat> It would also say you need to come to a man to be forgiven. But God's word says there is one mediator between God and man, Christ Jesus. And many other things. It would also say you need to have these kind of last rites and stuff before you die to be to be saved, to get to heaven. When that's nowhere in scripture. Okay, Jesus, ye hypocrite, hypocrites. Well did Esaias prophesy to you, saying, This people draw nigh to me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Come here, buddy. Come here. Sorry, guys. For in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Okay, so we get the point there. All right, so Jesus was being bold. He was, he was, he was speaking against uh, the prevailing teachings of the time through Judaism, becoming corrupted by traditions of men, right? Because the Lord commanded the law, right? And it to be a certain way. But, but then there's men, mankind, who is leading such things, any worldview and practice. So it can become convoluted, corrupted. That's why it's all eyes on Jesus, not on your fav favorite pastor, preacher, church denomination. None of that. It's all chips on Jesus. Knowest thou not, or sorry, knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Yeah, this is where we have to be bold. So Pharisees had this presentation of being holy in leaders. But Jesus spoke the truth in boldness, right? Even we may be called to do that in church gatherings if we hear something uh, that's not in concert with Scripture. <clears throat> we have to speak the truth in boldness. And this is tough because this could get us like blackballed, excluded. Um, you know, we could, we could lose, um, I don't know, just fellowship. People could be offended. But he did it. And Jesus answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Right? So if something's not proper and correct, it's going to be rooted up. So it's a good thing to speak boldness. You could convict someone who's misled. They don't want to be rooted up. They could hear this word, be convicted, and be like, Oh yeah, that's totally not in Scripture. But we've always done it here at this church in my family. Whatever, you know, fill in the blank. Jesus goes on to say, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. So yeah, Jesus is saying, hey, don't be blind. Your end is, is not going to be good. <clears throat> All right, what else did I want to point out of here? Oh yeah, and then I wanted to wrap it up here with saying, I, I, I was reading an article where the Pope so-called was saying, it was translated, he was saying basically that, that every man is basically good. He was using language like that. 
And we know from scripture that's not true. Uh, we know from the book of Psalms, surely in my mother's womb I was conceived in sin and all have fallen short. Um, many other scriptures, but here we hear Jesus countering what this so-called Pope said. Jesus saying, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart and they defile man. So not the food that goes in, the traditions and practices um, that the Pharisees were talking about. It's not that, because that comes in and then is excreted out of the body. That doesn't cause defilement, but what's in a heart, what's internal. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands defiles not a man. So Jesus was bold, saying, your traditions of you must wash. Your disciples aren't washing before they eat. They're making a big deal out of it. Jesus is saying, that doesn't defile a man, but what is within the heart. Yeah, that causes sin, all these types of sins I just read. So when you have someone like a, a, a so-called leader, uh, the Pope, <clears throat> saying, man, it's basically good. There couldn't be anything further from the truth. That's why Christ Jesus came. He came for the, the sinners. That's for all of us. You know what I mean? So, wanted to point out these things. We need to be bold, uh, even in the faith, face of those who might seem prominent or leaders, or even uh, they, they might appear as brethren. But if we hear a voice different from the Good Shepherd, Christ Jesus, and there's traditions creeping up, and those are being made prominent and being pushed as important, and we do this, and etc., etc., um, the boldness we can learn from scripture how to be bold even in the face of that just like jesus did he didn't blink he, he spoke such things that <clears throat> let everybody know uh no i don't think so uh, jesus you know like again when he was saying thus have you made the commandment of god of none effect by your tradition you couldn't be much more clear there he's saying that tradition is making god's commandment like void and null and uh, he was calling them out on that and the disciples saying, hey, don't you know the Pharisees were offended? You know, Jesus <laughs> didn't really address that directly. He was just saying, every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted will be rooted up. Uh, let them alone. They be blind leaders. Okay, so, yeah, he's preaching the truth. And again, Jesus came for the sinners, and he was more gentle. And there was more things done with those who were humble. The woman caught in adultery, um... You know, people who were sick with illnesses and, you know, they weren't prideful. They were, hey, help me. He helped them. But these prideful ones, these hypocrites, Jesus had harsh words for them to try to direct them. All right, guys, better get back to watching these dogs. I see Moses and I see Hazel. All right, hope this blessed you guys. Be bold today. God's word gives us these principles and these examples from Christ Jesus, how to do this. And we can do it and it can be powerful. You could lead somebody from death to life a seeming believer who's in errant ways, maybe not even properly converted to proper conversion and eternal life, avoiding hell. Uh, let's do that. Let's be bold. And uh, God's word will help you do that today. So guys, thank you for watching my video. I appreciate it. Please hit the thumbs up and uh, make sure you're subscribed to my channel. I'm going to show you the dogs here real quick and then sign off. Hey, Moses. Good boy. All right, buddy, where'd your sister go? Good girl. All right, guys, you say goodbye to people. Hey, Moses. All right, love you, family. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. God bless you.